week seven and eight are over of the fat loss fast track so you want to hear how i did week seven sucked like sucked a lot it i don't know what happened but i did notice in the group that numerous people had a difficult time week seven i don't know if it was like just crusting over that hump caused people to like throw their hands up in the air and go oh i can't do it anymore please i'm done i don't know but it happened to me it happened to a good chunk of people now i mentioned in my last video that during week six my portion sizes were going from this to like this they were starting to creep upwards and i really wanted to get a hold of that in week seven and i didn't not even a little bit not even a little bit in fact week seven they just continued to grow and not only that but i started throwing things like cookies and cake and stuff like that in there now when i say i didn't do well i you know i wasn't eating those things every day i maybe had a couple of cookies here and there no let's be honest here there was one day in there that there were girl scout tagalongs involved and i'm pretty sure i ate like seven of them so yeah, let's be real honest about this and call it what it is. I kind of fell off the wagon and just kind of bounced along behind the wagon for a couple of days. But week eight rolls around and I decided, you know what, who am I punishing by eating tagalongs? Nobody. I did realize after several days, I ate the tagalongs, I will tell you. Let me give you some details behind the tagalongs. I was doing something that I didn't feel like I should have to do. I was angry about it. And I was really, really irritated that I had to do it. And it involved me walking through the dining room where the tagalongs were sitting. And every time I walked by, I grabbed one and shoved it in my mouth. Now, mind you, I love tagalongs. But are they the end all be all of cookies? Probably not. But yeah, they're delicious and lovely and um, by far my favorite Girl Scout cookies because, you know, peanut butter and chocolate, come on, what's wrong with that? I mean, literally every time I passed them in the dining room, I picked one up. And I wasn't terribly conscious about it until I made myself be conscious about it. And once I did that, it stopped. Unfortunately, I was seven into the box but I did stop and I wrote them down and I wrote down why I did them and I realized that I'm not so much a happy eater or I'm not so much a sad eater. I'm a mad eater. I like to eat when I'm angry. Now, nah, let, let's, let's be truthful here. I like to eat just in general. I like to eat when I'm happy, sad, mad, glad, doing a little dance. So I did get the, the taglongs out of the way and did not have any more of those. So in truth, I think I didn't really, overall, I didn't do horribly. Then week eight rolled around and I listened to my webinar on Sunday morning, like I always do, or maybe it was Sunday afternoon. And I listened to it and it really struck a chord with me. And I'm like, I am not doing this for me. I am just doing it. And I've invested this money in this program. Why am I not doing it? And so I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and I got back on the wagon and it picked up. And then towards the end of the week, I got sick. Turns out getting sick was actually probably the best thing that could have happened. Because one of the things that I've learned doing this program is that I need to listen to what my body tells me. And my body was telling me I was sick. I was not a happy camper. But my body also was telling me that I wasn't hungry at all. I just wasn't hungry. I just decided if I'm not actually hungry, I'm not gonna eat. It was not drama. I certainly carry enough fat to nourish my body for a couple of days if I don't eat. But if my body says that I'm not hungry, why would I eat? And so I didn't. And you know what? Nothing really happened. I was fine. I got healthy. You know, I've gotten better on the same course that everybody else has. And it actually, I didn't, I went for probably a little over 24 hours without eating anything. And then the next morning I had some coffee with milk in it and I was fine until about lunchtime. And about lunchtime, I started getting really, really hungry. So I ate at lunchtime the next day. So it was probably closer to 30 hours that I went without eating and I was fine. 
and I was truly okay. You know, I didn't certainly didn't drop a ton of weight from not eating for one day, maybe a half a pound, if that. I don't know, I don't weigh myself every day anymore. I used to obsessively weigh myself every morning, but I don't do that anymore. I, I really try and stick to once a week. So I weighed in this morning, week eight. I am down eight pounds on this program. Let me put this in perspective for you. I have been the weight that I am up one or two pounds, down one or two pounds, you know, the same four pound range for 18 months, maybe longer without changing. You know, if I eat soy sauce, I gain because of the salt. Um, if I eat popcorn with salt on it, same thing, but I've lost eight pounds and that is huge. I'm, I'm still losing. I'm ecstatic with this program and elated with this program. And it's not necessarily what I'm eating because Elizabeth Benton doesn't really tell you what you can and can't eat. She gives you guidelines and you can choose to follow them or not. And I, I choose to follow them. I don't invest money in something and not stick to it. So for me, this program, I was going to follow it to the letter as best I could for the duration of the program. And if it worked, great. If it didn't work, great too. Because a lot of Elizabeth Benton's practices are about your brain and being mindful and, you know, living in the present, not worrying about the future and so many things that apply to so much more than food that I knew if I didn't lose a pound, I would actually still gain a lot of knowledge about myself from it. And I was totally happy with that. Side bonus, I have lost eight pounds and I still have four weeks to go. So if I can lose another couple of pounds, I'm, I'll be elated. I guess what I have to say is there will be times in your life that you feel like your life sucks or what you're doing sucks and you've fallen off the wagon and you don't know how to get back on. My advice to you, just get back on. No drama. Don't stress about it. Just get back on. So you had a super crappy breakfast full of pancakes and bacon and butter and syrup. Ooh, that's making me hungry. Doesn't mean the whole day is ruined. You can have a good lunch, have a salad without cheese and bread and all of those side things that make salads bad for you. You can have grilled chicken for dinner. You can have something that will be okay. Just because you have fallen off the wagon doesn't mean you have to stay off the wagon. Just get back on. I will see you again in two weeks to let you know how weeks nine and 10 went. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya! Make sure you click on my big laughing face so you can subscribe to my channel and I'll put two videos up that you can click on. Go ahead and click on those and keep on watching. I'll see you in the next one. See ya!